This is the third image, and the last one we'll take a look at. It has basically the same gamut of issues that the other ones have. That is perspective, like the second image, as well as surfacing and lighting of the first image. So as far as perspective, let's look at what he's already established and how there might be some issues there and how you'd go about trying to correct those. Well, first is identifying where the horizon line is because all perspective is going to be based on the horizon line because the vanishing points are on the horizon line. The vanishing points tell you the angles that everything should be at. The horizon line, as indicated from the scene right now, is right there. Why is it right there? It's because of these bricks. These bricks already show perspective. They're diminishing into the background at a certain rate, and if you run them all back, they connect at this point. That means that's the horizon line. The horizon line is tilted to equal the tilt from the scene. Everything needs to be using that horizon line. Ish. You can do it that way, and that's the way I went with it. I tried, I uh, go on, we'll look at the rest of these layers, where I tried to adapt the scene to meet that horizon line. The other option is to adapt some of the other things to a new horizon line. I think perhaps it would actually serve the image better if the horizon line was put somewhere more in this region instead of that region. Uh, and I will show that if this is the new horizon line, and I run this back here, I'll say that this one is my baseline, and then I run it to this point here, which is the crack, these do not diminish as quickly. And I think that might be better for this scene, but that's not what he indicated, so we go another direction. So we have the horizon line and we have the ground bricks. The scene confuses me a little bit. You've got a walkway here. Fine, totally good with that. But we got a wall that seems to be going at this angle. If this is here, then that wall is going at a 90 degree to that angle, which is going back there or something like that. We're almost seeing this wall on its, you know, more flat on, which means that it has to be turned to us quite a bit, like I show here. Uh, in which, but, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking that this wall should probably be parallel to the road, like the wall thickness should be there and this wall should be like that, in which case we'd see very little of the edge of the wall. But, you know, maybe maybe this, you know, city has things that are all askew and the wall goes at an angle. That's what we'll go with because that's more of what has been indicated. Uh, but we do need to adjust for the perspective on the side. So these are the new angles that these stones need to be set in. So we'll put that in in just a second as well as the other side. Now here's a rule of thumb. We have our horizon line. Anything over this horizon line wants to come down to the vanishing point. Anything under this horizon line wants to come up to the vanishing point. But we have a mistake here where the wall is going up on the upside of the horizon line we would then need to adjust it so it is following a pattern something like this. I'm not, I eyeballed this, okay? Because the wall at that angle would put the vanishing point off of my monitor and it was, you know, I, I eyeballed it because it was so far out there. All right, it's almost flat, I'll tell you that. Other things to look at is this building is using a different vanishing point than this wall, which I would think those would probably be parallel, or this one and this one would be consistent. He's getting some of the perspective right. This is fairly accurate to itself if the rest of the scene matched it. This is accurate to itself, but the rest of the scene doesn't match it, and each piece by itself. Adjusting the wall. Here I've adjusted the wall, and I will put these up and now you can see where the lines in the wall are matching up with my guidelines. Uh, don't really pay attention so much to the lighting um, changes. We'll mainly look at the perspective changes there. Now, the mid-ground wall would be wanting to follow the same angle as this flat plane. It seems to me that this plane and this plane would both be parallel. 
therefore they would use the same perspective and that is sort of what we get there. This is also the reason I think move, moving the horizon line up in a scene would probably be a little better because this seems too distorted, uh, but we're running for consistency here. Now we also want to look at something else. Let's pull these off and look at character heights. Ooh, boy. We can figure out how big these guys are in the background or how big they should be, and that is what I came up with here. Let me run you through some of the thinking on that. This character has her heel right there. Now let's turn on the rising line. We'll need that for a second. Now her going straight up is somewhere like that. Now she is crouched over, so I assume her full height would be somewhere in that region. And if that needs to match up with these guys, this guy's center is right about here. Uh, his cloak is coming out, but I assume his middle would be right about there. His head is right about here. Now, I'm going to line up the feet so that the feet are running to the same point. And I'm looking right here where those two would match up. It's off my screen. And right there, I need to run a line to her head. That way, he and her could be the same height given the perspective. I'm using her to determine his height as well as his height. So his head needs to come up to there, and then his height needs to be brought down to about here. There we go. That's how we can determine how big or small things should be in this scene. We put those guys in, that would be more accurate to their size for the scene in relation to her. Uh, perspective has sort of been completed. Uh, most things are accurate to each other. Now let's take a look at the lighting. 